Department of Family Medicine. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Portnoy, the Chairman of the Department of Pain Medicine and Palliative Care, who will introduce today's speaker. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, in planning these sessions throughout the year, we're trying to balance uh, issues related to pain, particularly chronic pain, and issues related to palliative care. And we're very fortunate in, uh, in my department now to have Dr. Saida Sheena, who is the, the newly hired director of the first headache program I at Beth Israel Medical Center. This headache program is a joint program of the Department of Pain Medicine and Palliative Care and the Department of Neurology. Uh, and his arrival here last July has given us the ability to create a new headache program with really cutting edge therapies. And we thought that it would be a very nice opportunity for him to, t to teach us about chronic headache. Uh, Dr. Ashina is a neurologist. Uh, he got his medical degree at the University of Copenhagen. He did his neurology training at Albert Einstein. He did his headache training at both the, De the Danish Headache Center in Copenhagen, which is um, a very prominent headache center for many, many years, as well as the headache center at Montefiore in the Bronx, which is also a very prominent headache center. He's been involved in numerous investigations during the past 10 years, uh, has published uh, widely, and uh, is bringing to Beth Israel Medical Center both a clinical program and a research and education program. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Dr. Saeed Ashina to you to talk about chronic migraine. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Portnoy, for the kind introduction. And uh, everyone, welcome, and thank you for coming. Uh, I will start with my disclosures. Um, and these are my disclosures. And we'll go further. Uh, I'll start with some facts about migraine, which we need to know before we talk about chronic migraine. Now, in the world of, of headache, uh, most of the neurologists uh, consider migraine as an episodic uh, condition. It's, but Lately, we have changed that, and we, we now think that migraine is more, more or less like chronic disorder with episodic attacks or manifestations. Uh, it's always important to know that migraine is also a diagnosis of exclusion, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes it's mistaken for sinus or tension headaches, uh, which is very important to differentiate. And uh, based on the attack frequency, migraine can be either episodic or chronic. Uh, I would like to start with the classification of migraine. Uh, in 1987, uh, Yes Olsen from Copenhagen um, proposed uh, international um, headache criteria, which have has later uh, evolved, and, and there have been some change in 2004. And now we operate with this uh, diagnostic criteria for migraine. So in order for, for individuals to have a, a diagnosis of migraine without aura, uh, a uh, person need to have at least five days uh, with a headache which lasts anywhere from four to 72 hours and need to have at least two characteristics. It's, it's either unilateral location, pulsating quality, moderate or severe intensity, or aggravation by physical activity. Uh, and the second set of uh, criteria, which is uh, you need to have at least one of those, is uh, either nausea or or and or vomiting or photophobia and phonophobia. Now, uh, you will ask me the question, uh, what if the patient has bilateral location of headache or is pressure-like? Yes, there are some migraineurs who can have uh, bilateral headaches, uh, approximately 40%. And, but you need at least have those, those criteria, at least two of this or one of this in order to get a diagnosis. Uh, another argument would be whether, uh, why not including the others, is that uh, the purpose of using these migraine classifications makes it easier for us to compare migraineurs to each other and use it also in, as a research tool. If one of the migraineurs missing, or it, one of the patients missing one of those criteria, let's say has only one here or, and one here, or only two here and no uh, criteria here, then we call it probable migraine. It's a new, uh, uh, new term we use in appendix criteria in order to facilitate research and see whether these uh, individuals later will progress to uh, the true migraine attacks. So remember uh, this criteria. Um, we also divide, you know, we like divisions in, in neurology, we like two classifications, and that's why we further divide migraine in migraine with aura and without aura. Two thirds of uh, migraineurs have uh, pure migraine headache without auras. Uh, the rest, approximately anywhere from 20 to 30 percent, will have auras, which are visual, sensory, or speech disturbances occurring anywhere from five minutes to 60 minutes before the headache. Uh, and in 5% of the cases, uh, 
a migrant with or and without or can coexist. Now, the migrant is a complex condition, and um, when you uh, talk about migrant, you always talk about uh, the pain phase, about a uh, headache phase. But it's important to notice that migrant has also some other different symptoms. And um, if you consider a migrant or has a threshold for to develop a migraine, then um, and this migraine has some triggers, which could be weather conditions or stress or uh, or argument in, in the family, uh, which can you know. Kind of facilitate that uh, the the transition to the headache phase. Then what you can have is that they can sometimes complain about some symptoms days or hours before uh, before the headache, which could be um, feeling of tiredness, somnolence, dizziness. Um, we have recently became aware of that because using uh, various uh, questionnaires, we have identified the symptoms, and now we're trying to f to find out whether the centers which are responsible for this uh, symptoms in the brain are um, associated with the initial initiation of the migraine attack. Some individuals will have uh, later after the premyter symptoms oral symptoms, and then we have the headache phase uh, where we uh, intervene with medications and we treat uh, with the migraine nerves. Later, we have the improvement phase, which can basically mimic premonitory symptoms. Um, it's sort of like an epilepsy. You get postictal symptoms. The same in the headache. Uh, the migraineurs would tell you that they will be feeling, you know, feeling tired and exhausted after the attack. It will take them some time to, to recover. And then we have the end of the attack. Um, now, the migraines, as I mentioned before, is divided episodic and chronic. And, uh, in 2006, uh, after uh, a debate, uh, it was decided to uh, give uh, this uh, set of criteria the name of chronic migraine. And you can see that the magic number is 15. So if the if individual has 15 or more headaches per month, then he might have a chronic migraine. Uh, later, the eight days that mid criteria of migraine came in, in the picture because uh, we wanted to isolate chronic migraine from tension type headache, chronic tension type headache, and that helps us to do that. Um, and we also exclude the medication that we use that we know that many migraineurs are overusing medications uh, 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 when they have, uh, when they're afraid of getting a new attacks and, um, and escalate the use. Uh, the reason I'm using this slide is that um, it's very important to know that the definition of chronic migraine evolved from a former definition of called transform migraine proposed by Lipton and, and Silberstein. Uh, they uh, used uh, less strict criteria, but unfortunately, uh, this definition is, has been um, problematic because uh, it includes patients with a chronic tension type headache and might include a patient with medication overuse and is, um, is a problematic to use in the research and also in diagnosis and in treatment. In the treatment. And uh, we uh, sort of uh, have had a huge discussions about whether to use this criteria or not. And, and the reason I show it to you that if you search about treatments of chronic, chronic migraine epidemiology, you will uh, often meet this uh, term of transport migraine. But we're trying to move from this term more, and now we're calling it chronic migraine with all these new criteria. As any con with as any condition, uh, you start to diagnose uh, uh, chronic migraine with a history and exam, and uh, it's very important that you get a detailed history, uh, find all the look remember all these criteria for migraine you have, find try to find them, and if you find some worrisome features which we call the red flags, then we have you have to think about secondary causes. Remember, the migraine is a diagnosis of exclusion. And um, after that, if you exclude the red flags and you don't find them, then you, go, then you consider primary headache. Now, still, in the primary headache, when you have the patient, you will think of sometimes that they might have some atypical features. It could be prolonged migraine uh, aura, or it could be uh, some of the criteria of migraine, but some of them are missing. Then you will still have to reconsider secondary causes. And it's very important because even uh, with the patients with the chronic uh, history of migraine and uh, presenting to your office, you can still actually sometimes diagnose uh, tumors in the brain or you know, other secondary uh, conditions. And uh, when you have ruled out all, uh, all possible causes, then you uh, operate with diagnosis of primary headache disorder.